there's a problem. This is one of the most famous paintings ever created by a human being. Painted in 1642, it sits in a hallowed place in the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam. Its innovative use of dramatic lighting made its creator, this Dutch guy named Rembrandt, you may have heard of, a celebrity in his own time. He's still pretty famous today. The painting, which is called The Night Watch, is uh, at the top of the checklist for hundreds of thousands of people who go through that museum every year. But here's the problem. This photo says it all, right? But it's not what you think. There's actually more than one problem. Studies have shown that the average time that people in a museum actually look at a piece of art is only 17 seconds, and that's decreasing. Blame it on Instagram. People just don't deal with images in the same way they used to. You know, you're just facing this constant barrage of images coming past you. You have to spend all day sorting through them. You know, they're continuously scrolling and scanning and trying to figure out what you need to like and what you can pass by. Plus, social media has made us all into content creators. So we have to go around documenting our experience wherever we go. We don't have time to stop, pause, and reflect in a museum. Then problem number two. Now these kids are not doing what you actually think. They're actually using the Rex Museum's own app to learn about that piece of art. But that app is forcing them to look down. Now my journey at Impossible Things started in perhaps a very unlikely place, especially for you know, where you might meet an artist. That's where I met Alex Mayhew, who's a BAFTA award-winning creative director, who was kind of burned out from a previous large project that he had done, creating a series called Time Tremors, which had included an augmented reality scavenger hunt for kids. Now he told me how he would go and sit in the AGO and meditate in front of this painting, which some of you may recognize by a guy named George Agnew Reed, who's a former student here a little while ago. But not just that, but also a former principal, so the, the former Sarah Diamond of, uh, of OCADU. And he would sit in front of this painting because it was so tranquil. And it took him away from all of the stresses that he had in sort of his media sensated environment. But he noticed and got kind of sad by the fact that people would just kind of walk by and that they would maybe take a picture, but they wouldn't really take a close look at the painting. So he thought to himself, I wonder what the scene would look like if it was painted today. So sort of imagine what would a modern day image of this look like? And he got an idea. And then he got excited. And then he made a prototype. And then he pitched it to the AGO. And they bought it. So he partnered with OCAD University. And that's where I came in. We raised a bit of money to do some research from the Ontario Centers of Excellence. And we hired some amazing students from this institution. And we got to work. His idea was to use the very technologies that distracted smartphones to drive a new kind of engagement with classic art using augmented reality. We call it Reblink. We created 10 modern day reinterpretations of 10 classic paintings that you can only see with our app on a smart device. Why augmented reality? Because it allows you to tell stories and relay information while you directly engage with the paintings in a natural way. Reblink remixes art in kind of the same way that a DJ remixes music, sort of riffing on the original, but creating something new. Reblink was launched at the AGO in July, and it dramatically increased the amount of time that people spent looking at paintings. And it got a lot of attention. So far, it's generated over 150 press stories and over 1.3 million video views. And it's been a hit with people seeing it at the AGO from all age groups. In all, it took over two years to go from idea to innovation to execution. And in the meantime, new AR games like Pokemon Go have come out, uh, AR-enabled devices like the iPhone X, and it's caused a lot of excitement about augmented reality. And so for us, it's, we've been kind of lucky. Timing is everything. And since the launch of Reblink, we've been a little inundated with potential new projects. What we're working on right now is taking what we've learned from Reblink and trying to apply it to some ideas that we're very passionate about. This one is called Anna. It's uh, an augmented reality AI that 
thinks she's a 17-year-old girl and is part of an interactive series for AOL Huffington Post. This is what we call Secret Bear. Uh, it's an imaginary robot friend that helps you manage your busy kid life. And Otherworldly, which is a real-time location-based game that allows you to peer into a parallel dimension and learn the real story of the magical creatures that live there. So thank you so much to the AGO and to the OCE and especially to OCAD University for their partnership. And um, I thank you for listening to a little bit of our story. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.